Hello, welcome to this tutorial or demo tutorial for the electromagnetic workbench for FreeCAD. My name is Alejandro Muñoz Manterola from the University of Granada, and I will be introducing you to the first demo we're going to do here for the electromagnetic workbench. That said, the program we are going to use is FreeCAD, and within FreeCAD, we are going to have the electromagnetic workbench installed. So when we open FreeCAD, if you're not familiar with it, this demo is going to be more detailed than usual, just to go step by step, designing the model, the finding properties, sources, rows, and then well, performing the simulation and reading the results. So let's start. And when we open FreeCAD, we're going to see a menu like this. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new file. To do that, we can simply click on Create New, or we can always go to the top left, the, the buttons that we can choose for File, and then we can create on New. If we do that, this is going to create an unnamed project. And this project, the first thing we should always do is just give it a name. So to do that, with selecting the unnamed project, we can go down to Label, and on Label, we can just give it a name. We will be modeling a fairly famous satellite inspired by it. So let's just give it a relevant name and then just click enter. Next, we want to select the object and we want to save us. This is going to open a folder where we can have different models and then we can just write the name of our file, for example, the Sputnik model. We click enter and then we're ready to go. So if you've never used FreeCAD, you will find that on the top menu, we're going to have the Start Workbench. And we can drop down this menu to select other multiple workbenches. The first thing we want to do is we want to select the electromagnetic workbench. To do that, we just drop down and just click on it. Once we do, we're going to set that in the hotbar, most of our options are going to change to those relevance of the workbench we are currently active. So now, uh, when we are going to design one of these problems, the first we always want to do is we want to create a new simulation container. This is a basic container that is going to have the most basic containers we will want to use in any design. So we just click here, or as I said before, if we don't find the option, we can always go to the electromagnetic simulation workbench option that appears now, and then just choose the option here. Some of they may be grayed out, but those will become available when we uh, select a specific type of object or when we um, are performing specific actions. So don't worry if the option you want to choose is not uh, available. Now, we click on simulation container, and this is going to add on our, on our preview or combo view a uh, new tree with the simulation, and inside of it, we're going to see analysis, materials, model, etc. These are other different containers we are going to be filling with different types of uh, objects. So, first, we have the analysis container, and for the analysis container, what we're going to do is we are going to um, add a solver container. The solver container is going to include a measure, a measure container too. So we click on it, and then it's going to appear on the combo view. We need to drag these objects to the containers they belong to. So for the analysis for the solver container, we need to drag it to the analysis container. Just drag and drop. It should be inside, and inside the solver, we're going to have the measure. Now, here we can just double click, and then we're going to find different parameters. We are going to leave it like this for now because some of them will change as we start editing our uh, problem. So for now, we just leave it like that and we can just close the analysis container for now. Next, we are going to start meshing our problem. In order to mesh our problem, we want to go to the parts design, the part workbench, I'm sorry. Uh, in the part workbench, we can select a sphere. We are just going to this workbench because this model specifically is going to be a fairly simple model, which is only going to use the tools that are already available in FreeCAD. Of course, you can always import a new type of model from an existing file, like a CAD file, 
or an SDL file, but that will be covered in another demo. So now let's just click the sphere button, and this is going to create a sphere. And again, the sphere object is going to appear here. And we're going to double click it, and then we're going to see the different types of parameters that we can change. This sphere in particular is going to be centered on x0, y0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 position. And the radius of this sphere is going to be 300 millimeters, 300. And we click OK, and then we're going to see that we cannot see anything, but that's because of the scale of the sphere now. We can always, inside the visual interface, we can right click, fit all, and then we're back in business. Now, this sphere is a geometry. Geometries belong to the model container. So, in order to move it there, we need to drag it inside the model container. And then we're going to see it's inside. Now, we are going to mesh our geometry. When our geometry is volumetric or, or, or geometry is a surface, we need to mesh them for some specific uh, applications. In this case, it's mandatory. So what we're going to do among one of the choices is we're going to go to the Mesh Design Workbench here. We click it, and it's going to make another new set of tools available. With the sphere selected on the, on the object, on the tree, we are going to now go to the Create Mesh from Shape. We're going to deselect the shape. The standard options are OK in this case. So we're just going to click OK. And now we're going to see that there's a new object here called the square mesh that needs to be on the same level of our geometry. So in this case, it goes inside. In order to hide or show different types of objects in the visual interface, maybe for editing purposes or for design purposes, we can always click on it and press the spacebar, and this is going to hide our objects. There's going to appear grayed out of the interface. If we click the spacebar again, it's going to show it. Similarly, if we want to change how some of our objects look, like for example, for a mesh object, we can go to the view uh, tab on the middle left, and then we can choose different types of objects. For example, we're going to make it look like a wireframe. There we go. That's our mesh. We can see we can change the color too if we would like, but for now, this is OK. So we are just going to leave it like this. Now, our small satellite is going to have a different antennas. It's going to have two short antennas and it's going to have two long antennas. These antennas are going to be modeled as wires. And in order to model things as wires in the electromagnetic workbench, we need to draw some polylines or some simple lines, depending on the complexity that we're looking for. In this case, to draw these polylines, we need to go to the draft workbench. Again, we're going to use the tools that are available by default on FreeCAD, apart from the electromagnetic workbench. The draft workbench is going to show a new set of options, but the one we're interested in is the polyline, a draw polyline object. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to click it. And it's important design-wise when we are doing things for the electromagnetic workbench, when we're doing or drawing lines or different types of geometries, we need to untick relative, we need to untick field, and we need to tick or select global. This is going to make it so when we input our coordinates, they are going to use be relative to the global coordinate system and not another object, which can be a headache. So now we are going to spend some minutes creating our wires. These coordinates I'm going to input, of course, are already calculated. But of course, if you have your own coordinates, you can always use your own coordinates. So. Polyline is designed by making a series of points and then connecting these points one with the following one. So the first one is going to be 300 on Z with the rest zero. We click on enter point and that's going to create the first point. And then one by one, we are going to use input the other coordinates. Then we are going to go to 25 and we can see already 
uh, a small line here. Um, you can see the moment I move my cursor inside the graphical interface, the coordinates are changing on the left, so we always need to be careful. So now we're going to go back to zero, 150, uh, 325, and then enter point. And then last, it's going to be 2,000,000, and then 504. There we go. We click enter point, and then we click finish. And this is going to create our first polyline, which is going to be glowing on green. As you can see, we gave the polyline or the antenna a small wedge there, a small angle, so it enters perpendicular to the sphere. While this is not needed, it's, it can avoid some headaches later on in simulations, so we're just going to go with this design. And this is going to create a wire object. Again, as we said before, it's technically a geometry, so we're going to add it to the model. Now, fairly quicker and maybe a bit more silent, we are just going to quickly create the other four antennas. They are going to follow similar points. They are going to be mirrored along the different sides of the, the sphere. Then we're going to be minus 300, minus 325, then 150 minus 325, and then 2000 minus 504. That would be the bottom antenna. Then we click finish, and there we can see we have the other antenna. These are going to be the longer antennas. Now we're going to follow with the shorter antennas, which are going to be on the sides. For this, we're going to move to the x-axis with the same philosophy and almost the same coordinates. 325, enter point. 325, 150. And then we are going to go with 504 on x, and instead of 2,800, enter point, finish. One more with negative x now. 325, 25150, 504, and 1800. Enter point and finish. And now we have the geometry for our antennas. And as we can also see, we can click on this small shape here on the top left. It's going to allow us to quickly move to other views. As you can see here, we have our different antennas, and the length of antennas, as we said, it's going to be, ones are going to be slightly shorter, ones are going to be uh, slightly longer. Okay, there we go. Again, these are geometries. These go inside the model container. And now, let's also give them some more specific names. This is in the positive Z axis, so this is going to be wire post Z. Similarly, wire neg z wire pose x wire neg x there you go just so we can quickly identify them it's going to be helpful okay now these wires technically are just geometries but they are not cables we are going to define our antennas are cables to do that we need to go back to the electromagnetic workbench and then we need to choose make cable here. We click make cable, it's going to create a new type of file, a new type of object, which again goes inside model because this is also not technical geometry, but it's linked to a geometry. So we see when we open it, we're going to have different types of options. We're going to see that we need to choose a wire material, which we haven't defined yet. And then which type of terminal is going to be on the start of the polyline that we're going to assign, which is going to be on the end of the polyline, which we're going to assign, and then which polyline we are going to assign it to. For now, let's go back quickly, and we're going to create four more cables. And then we are going to drag them inside. 
There we go. Model. Again, renaming. Very useful. Post Z. Next set being ordered based on and the end. Post X. Make X. Okay. All of our cables or antennas are going to have the same material. When we're talking about a cable material or a terminal material, we're talking about the specific software cable. To do that, we need to select Add Terminal Container. And this is a material. Because this is a material, this doesn't go inside the model container, but the material container. This terminal, we're going to give it a more specific name, which is going to be terminal 50 O M 50 ohm. Then we're going to double click it. We're going to be able to select different types of properties, but we're going to go with termination series RLC. And then we're going to give it 50 because it's what we want. And also we are going to go to Clone Theme again, or we can choose it on the toolbar. And then wire material container and this wire material in its material so it goes inside materials we're going to give it a name it's a type of cable it's going to be a standard type and the radius we're going to set it to three millimeters so that's zero dot zero three meters. We're not going to add any type of resistance to it or inductance, but if you would like to, then you can go ahead. And then we're just going to give it a name. I like to give names, no spaces. There we go. That's it. Okay. And last but not least, our sphere is going to be made of a material. Of course, we can define multiple types of material, but for the purpose of this demo, we are going to define the sphere as a PEC material, as a PEC material, perfect electric conductor. To do that, we have the option here of add material container, or similarly, we can just use this drop down menu, then add material container, we click it, and by default, it's going to be PEC. If we would like to change it, we can double click it, but this is good enough for us, so we're going to drop it inside. Now, we need to assign the materials to the geometries. The cables, as we saw before, we just need to double click the cable type material. Now, when we select wire material, we're going to have our wire material that we created with three millimeter. Then the start terminal, we're going to set it to be your 50 ohm material, which is the one in contact with the sphere. And we want our end terminal to be open. Now, this is the positive Z cable. So we're going to assign it to the positive Z wire. And then we click OK. Similarly to the rest of the materials, we are just quickly going to define them. We don't have to define the size of these cables for this demo, but in the next demo, we will see some interesting stuff. And then negative X with an open and a 50 with the wear material. Okay, that solves the issue with the cables, but still we haven't defined the sphere. To define solids, whether it's volumetric or superficial, we can click on this item here, link geometry to materials, or again here, we can click on it. It's going to open a new window, which is going to have geometries on the left, materials on the right. When we want to assign the sphere to PC, what we're going to do is we're going to drag it inside. It's going to show inside. We click apply, we click OK. And that leaves the designing of the geometries and materials done for this problem. Now we are going to go with the warp prop container, which is what we're going to use to measure the current at the connection between the different antennas that we have and our uh, sphere. So to do that, still in the electromagnetic orange. We are going to go and we're going to add a wire probe container. This is going to create a new type of container down here, which is wire probe. Again, 
let's make it easy. Warple post set. And we're going to see that inside it's going to have a domain. We are going to have four different types of probes. So what we're going to do, if we're just quickly going to add more. Our pro for negative set or pro for positive x and our pro for negative x. We're going to select all of them, and because they're probes, they're going in the probe container. Now, by themselves, these probes allow us to choose the different type of uh, physical property that we want to measure. If we want to measure it on the time domain or different properties, but it, it's good as it is for now here. So we're going to click OK. But if you notice, we didn't define where these probes are going to measure. To do that, we need to add a point reference. And to do that, we can just click here. It's going to add a new type of item. This type of item, instead of creating four, uh, three more, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste it because this is going to be quicker. And we're going to add one to each one of our probes. We're going to put it there, put it there, put it there, and put it there. And now, one by one, we are going to select which point we want the probe to measure. This is going to measure on both Z. So when we double click points reference, it's going to open small window here on the right. We're going to select from list, well, pose Z, and then we're going to select vertex one because it's the vertex that it's connected to the probe. We can see a small green glow on the connection there. If we go to select the model, it's going to show selected. So we're done. We just click close. We go back. We close this one, and we move to the next one. And we're going to quickly go and select it. Negative set, vertex one, it's going to be model, positive x, vertex one, it's going to be model, and negative x, vertex one, and it's going to be model. That's it for the pros. We don't need to measure anything else in this problem. Now, we talk about measuring and geometry, but we haven't said anything about how we're going to source our problem, how we're going to eliminate it, or which type of way we're going to use. So, well, first, let's see the sources that we have. As we can see, we have the plane wave, the generation line, source online, but we're going to use a plane wave container. We're going to simulate a wave that it's traveling on the free space, and it's just going to hit our model and it's going to induce some currents. So we click on plane wave, we drag it inside sources because it's a source, and then if we double click it, we're going to see that a new window is going to open with different parameters like a box that it's going to be by default big enough to fit the entire problem. As you can see, some of the geometries are hidden, but they are there, they are just hidden. Um, this uh, model that it's going to be created, it's going to fit the problem almost perfectly, but we're going to extend the box a little bit more. To do that, we're just going to input some coordinates here that we already have pre-written, 564, 564, 564, negative, of course, because this is the lower bound, and this is the upper bound. So we're just going to use these properties here, hex explore. So we can see now it's not touching our wires. So we have some more room. Um, for this one, we are going to go with 2164. Now, the yellow arrow that we can see on the plane wave uh, source indicates which is the direction of the traveling wave. It's going to be traveling in the positive Z axis the, from bottom to top. And the red arrow that we're going to see is the polarization of the electric field we can see here on the right. Now, 
as exciting as it could be for a wave to travel from the bottom to the top, we're just going to make it. So uh, there's not going to be symmetry in the problem. So we're going to define that the wave is traveling on the minus one, one, one direction, which is an angle, as we can see. And we can also notice that the boxes on the right are red, because as you know, this needs, at least in free space, it needs to be uh, perpendicular to each other. So we are going to modify the electric to be like this. There we go. And now uh, the problem is defined with one small exception that it's we're not going to measure at one gigahertz, like the maximum the maximum frequency of this wave is not going to be um, one gigahertz. For us, it's going to be three hundred. 300 megahertz. There we go. That's it. Okay. We can check the shape of the wave and the transform here. Okay. That's it for the source. And now we just have two things left. These two things are boundaries, which we are going to set by default as BML, and thankfully by default they count. So we just leave them like that. And now the grid. The grid, of course, is important because we need to have enough definition for our problem to be solved uh, without error, but also we don't need to go to small, otherwise the problem is going to take forever to solve. Of course, we're going to close the options here. And these measurements are already predefined by me, but of course, if you have another type of measurements, by all means, go ahead and use your own measurements. So the lower bonding for this box is going to be minus 600 for all of them. Positive 600 for X and Z. And our Y axis, which is the direction of the, the, the longer direction of our satellite, it's going to be 2200. Of course, we can see how the boxes are still pretty huge. We can see them in an olive color here. So what we're going to do is we're going to either modify the number of elements per direction or per axis, or we can modify the dimension that we want to have in that axis. Right now it's at 120 millimeters, which is really big. It's good to notice that if we use um, an amount that wouldn't be divisible, such as it leaves an integer number of elements, it's going to run our bonding uh, limits to make sure it can give us an integer number. So you don't have to worry too much, but if you're worrying about how our lines are going to fall inside the machine, then we need to be careful. For now, we're going to use six millimeters in all directions, which is going to make quite a small problem, but as we can notice, we at least have two cells between the plane wave and the PML boundary. Normally, two cells are enough. I'm just going to leave six on all directions, just because. And also, we can see that we have quite a definition here. It's going to be a small. It's important to note that also the wires fall inside the edges of these the squares or of these cubes, which is a good way to ensure that our uh, wires are going to be defined mostly where we want. Of course, if we see this from the top, then we're going to see that there's going to be a specific angle here that we cannot solve. They, what these lines are going to be is the wires are going to adapt to the sides of these squares. So these lines are going to go to the edge they have closer and that's how it's going to be defined. As for the sphere, we will see soon, but it's going to be turned into small voxels, as we know for the FTTD type of um, numerical method. Okay, everything's done, with the exception of the analysis which we left for later. What we're going to do is we're going to double click this and we're going to input our own measurement. Uh, these are units that are already defined by me, of course, but 
if you have your own, again, feel free to use them. We're going to go with 2.5 uh, picoseconds as a time step. We're going to kind of play it safe. And instead of using a final time, we're going to use a number of time steps. And we're going to go for 8,000. This is going to ensure that the plane weight that is going inside the system has enough time to travel at least a couple times back and forth to solve some of those reflections and some of those fields. And important in the measure, we're going to go from relax to structure. And we're going to click OK. And we're going to save our model. We, we can go here or we can use the Control S shortcut or hotkey. Do we have a small blue icon here? We can always right click and recompute. And then we're ready to go ahead with the problem. In order to do this, we are going to select the simulation object, go to electromagnetic simulation on the top here, or use the options here. And then we're going to mesh objects with Semba. When we click here, two small screens are going to appear for some seconds, depending on the complexity of your problem. It's going to go faster or it's going to go slower. This shouldn't take too long. Sometimes if you click, it doesn't like it. There we go. It's going to tell us that, well, the problem has been written successfully. And if we check this small box, which is good to check, we're going to see the people who have made the solver. And if there were an issue on the top here, it would give us a warning on an error. Like, for example, be careful. We don't have enough definition on the wires. Uh, inductance may not be good. You need to change this or you need to change that. But as we can see, it finished. After we do that, it's going to create a new folder here. And in this folder, it's going to show us the mesh through Semba. So let's look at that mesh very quick. As we can see, we're going to hide some of these objects. We're going to hide the model. And we can see what we mentioned. This is a sphere made from voxels, very common for the FTTD problem. And as we were mentioning, the antennas, because they didn't fall perfectly into those edges now have this shape, but that's, that's normal, that's how it works. So it's fine, don't worry about it. There we go. Now we're going to select simulation again. We're going to go to electromagnetic simulation. And on the bottom here, we're going to see write FDDD JSON file. We're going to click there. It's going to take a couple seconds on writing the file. And it's going to tell us that it's written it. Now, as we have that, we're going to click OK. And then we are ready for launching the problem. We would go down here with the simulation object is still chosen. And we run the current simulation. Of course, this simulation is going to take a couple of minutes, especially if you're going to run it on serial. So what we're going to do is we're going to be sneaky and we're going to open an already finished model. It is the very same model with the very same parameters. As we can see, the different types of wire, almost the same naming convention here. And the good thing is that this one already has the simulation finished. So what we're going to do is we click on simulation we click on electromagnetic simulation, and then the plot simulation results button is going to be available. We click on it, and it's going to show us the different probes. So this is negative x, this is positive x, this is negative z, and this is positive z. And as we can see, the different probes will give us a different measurement. As we can see, the plane wave impacts against the probes roughly on 0 0.5 seconds, as we can see on the x and negative z. And then it just keeps traveling and keeps bouncing and keeps doing things with the PEC sphere. And then well, it just gives us this measurement. Of course, this measurement by itself doesn't mean a lot, but if you are solving a specific problem, this, this results will have meaning to you. So we can pause to solve these solutions. And I hope this small tutorial, or this small demo, has helped you understand how to use the electromagnetic warm edge for your first simulation. And uh, if you have any questions, please, you can direct it at the emails that are shown at the start of this talk. And I would be more than happy to help you with it.
I did or did you indulge with someone who can't? Thank you very much for your time. Have a pleasant day.